and welcome back to Crafts of Note. My name is Crystal. Welcome to the makes video for March. I think of all of the YouTube sewing crafter stuff, these are my favorite to watch and kind of my favorite to make too because I get so excited at the end of the month with all of the different things that I've made. And you're proud of them, they're like little trophies and you like to look at them. So this month I made a few things and we'll go into all of them in detail, but I have a Berkeley bra, a black beauty bra, scrunchies, a leather Starbucks holder for your, like the sleeve that keeps your hand from getting burned at Starbucks, a pair of flannel pajama pants, and the dress that I am wearing. So let's start with the dress since I am wearing it and we can talk about it. So this dress here is Vogue 9252 and I have really good footage that I'll put in now. But basically, I made it straight size 22 in the Telio cotton bloom sateen here that I have put in other previous videos with this pretty pink and orange and yellow like sunset color tulips on it that are like a paint view. And then from there, when I made it, the bodice was very big. It even still is, you can see, but it fits a lot better now. So I actually took in the sides, about three quarters of an inch on each side seam, and a dart shape, kind of like tapering down the amount I took out as I got near the waistline. And then the waistline is was really low. I am five foot ten, and it was an inch below my natural waist. And usually I have the opposite problem is it's too high on my waist. So between that and being too big and like sitting really long, the bodice looked really weird and it gaped funny because the apex of the, uh, the cup sewing didn't work. So I also ended up taking a scoop right here out of the neckline because I made my straps really short. You can see that they don't connect they're only a few inches long. So I made my straps really short to pull this up so that it fit right and a little smaller. And then on the scooping, it's supposed to be straight in the real pattern, but I scooped it because otherwise it was kind of hitting me like this and that was kind of uncomfortable. It didn't look good either. So just into my own little hack here. And I moved this down a little bit here because otherwise it, the points that the straps connect to would have been up here. And then the only other changes that I made is in the back. I used an invisible zipper. So you can see that you just can't see the zipper. And that was mainly just because I didn't have a zipper that matched. That was a regular zipper that it calls for. And then on the hem, I didn't do the double fold hem. I did a set, white satin bias binding hem, which you can see I'm holding up here. Kind of cool. It blends in really nicely and it helps to give a lot of body to the dress. When I first tried it on before I did the hem because I wasn't sure if it was going to drop, it didn't have a lot of body, it kind of fell flat. And then you'll see as you look at all the footage and the pictures that it, it gets a lot of body and it holds out really nicely. It's really fun to wear actually because you can spin in it. And I love it and I think it's super fun. It's great for spring, great for summer. It's a great Easter dress actually considering Easter is tomorrow as of when I'm filming this. and. I think the pattern is great and super cute with the high low hem. So let me know what you think of this dress. Would you make it? The first bra I made this month is the Berkeley bra from Orange Lingerie, which is designed for all stretch lace. And this is a new to me pattern I got for Christmas and the first time I've ever made it. And I actually really like it a lot. And I think it came out gorgeous with this teal lace with the silver metallic floral part in there. And then I got these findings from bra builders and they match perfectly. They're like just like an off-white bluish color and it works perfectly with the colors of the bra. I made a 40B with no adjustments yet so that I could have a tester forfeit and I did everything else as written in the pattern for the most part. You can look at the other side here. I lined it with sheer cup lining in a nude and then I did matching power net and matching elastics. I would say I sewed this with regular Gooderman all-purpose thread and I had a miserable time with skip stitches. I used my Microtex needle like I always do, but this has made me want to get Gooderman Mara 120 for everything because it sews much better with uh, bra making, especially, oh man, sewing the hook and eyes. 
they are a hot mess because they did not want to sell for some reason. They were awful. Anyway, the bra itself though is good. Got some mistakes because it's my first one. It's a little off center here, but you can't tell from the front of the bra. And I'd say overall the fit is pretty good for me. It's comfortable. Definitely compared to the Boylston bra, the band was fine. On me, the Boylston bra was so tight it felt like someone was squeezing my ribs like a corset, if not worse. And so this one is fine though. Same company, same pattern. So I would check before you adjust each one always. And then I might have to take out some volume from the top cup, which I tend to have to do anyway. I have a low top cup volume. And on this one, it's only, you don't line the lace. So you stabilize it with sheer or clear elastic, but it gapes a little tiny bit. So I might take a little bit of volume out of the cups, but otherwise it's a good fit. And I think this one is really pretty. I like it a lot. I'm very happy because teal is my favorite color. And I think this bra is just so pretty. The next bra that I made this month is another Black Beauty bra. And this is using a kit that Emerald Erin sells. She's known for having the black tool with the bees. And I think that the nude color is kind of new, but I really liked it a lot. I thought it was really cute and it was a great way to have a nude bra, but that was still kind of cool. And I think it looks really cool. And then I went to Joann's and I bought another honeybee with a little sparkle jewel in the middle to put as an accent. Everything set up beautifully. This is my fifth or sixth Black Beauty bra now. And I think I finally have the fit dialed in where it fits almost perfectly. And modifications that I have made, I have taken out upper cup volume, I have taken the apex down and took a little volume out overall and I shortened the distance here because it gaped on me. So I've had quite a few iterations and adjustments to try to get this to fit right for me. The original pattern is a 40B. Then this is the result of all of my adjustments. I love how this is sheer too. I think it looks so cool. So all of the findings match. They are all from Emerald Erin. This is view A, the one that has the fold over elastic straps. And here's the look at the other side. I think this is one of the cleanest bras I've sewed. The inside just looks great, if I say so myself. And you know, that's the hardest part is a lot of handmade makes, especially when you're a newer sewist like me, aren't necessarily perfect at the close up. And this one, I mean, it came out really, really good. And I really like it a lot. And I'll insert some pretty shots as well with this, I got some pretty pictures where it's more filled out on the cups because it's on my little half mannequin. But yeah, love this kit, super cute. Go to Emerald Erin's shop and get the pattern and the kit if you haven't started one yet. Kits are the best way to start because they give you everything you need. My next sewing makes are way less exciting to me. Uh, one of the things I really wanted to make was a pair of pajama pants. I've never made pajama pants before and these are the McCall's 2476. Now, for this pattern, I went exactly by the pattern's measurements for recommendations of what to make. So I think I made the extra, extra large, because it, if, according to the pattern, I would have had zero room at the hips if I'd made the extra large, no ease whatsoever. There's a reason these are on the table and not on me. They are absolutely gigantically ginormous, huge, comically huge, fall off my body, five to seven inches too long huge. I'm five foot ten so for a pattern to be that much too long is crazy and for that too big when that's what the pattern says. So you can see some of the details though. I made that with this cute uh, flannel I got from Joann's on the mega clearance. I think I paid maybe five dollars for all of it thankfully because I these aren't wearable. So they're canning because I have a garden in the summer and it's all canning stuff and I thought that was cute and it was cheap. It has a fake bow that you just sew on. I don't know why, because the rest of it is just an elasticated waist here. And now you can adjust this as tight as you want, technically, but the whole thing is just so humongous. And I don't know if I could even make the pattern again, with because it only comes in two size sets in the pattern envelope, so extra large and extra extra large. I think even if I made the extra large, they would be absolutely too big. 
you can see one leg there in the shot. <laughs> They're very, very large. I would do what I might call serger tailoring, where I go in into the side seams or the crotch area all the way down to the legs and just take some room out. There is definitely enough that I could try to make it fit better. But I did go back to Joann's the other day and I was able to get some more of this fabric. So I try again with a different pattern. Do you have a favorite pajama pant pattern? Because I was not impressed. Let me know because I would like to make some more and I got some really cute flannel that I want to make some for. Or pajama shorts because now we're getting closer to summer and it's hot here in the summer. Another sewing make I made this month was, you know, for fun, not super exciting, but kind of a scrap buster is that I made scrunchies. I've never made scrunchies before either, and it was fun. I was using, not that you really need a pattern, right? But I was using a pattern I got for free from Green Style Creations. And actually this does not work for my hair. <laughs> These are kind of disappointing because they don't work well for my hair. The size and the amount of elastic is just not stretchy enough for me to really wrap my hair around it. But you know, not everybody has hair as long and thick as mine. So a lot of people this would be just fine. But I had extra royal blue crepe back satin. So I used that for one. This is part of that peacock blue velvet I had left from that dress I made in January. So that's kind of cool. I thought that was nice to have a matching scrunchie. This is a music themed one. I had this left over from mask making. It's got like little metallic music notes and instruments and everything on it. And then I'm a book nerd. <laughs> so this other one is a, is a book themed fabric from the quilting section of Joann's. And you can see like Don Quixote and stuff in there. And I used my serger for these where I attach the elastic on the inner seam here and it stretches it for you. And I used the amount that they said. It's just not stretchy enough, that's all. Like you can see it doesn't really get that much bigger. So I would edit this, make it a little wider and use more elastic in there so that I have more stretch. And then I just inserted and sewed down. I wasn't being fancy because it's just a scrunchie and who's gonna see it once it's in your hair? I know, sometimes I guess we get lazy when we sew stuff, when you make a lot of stuff especially. The finer details might go. The next make is a leather making make that I did early on this month. I wanted to use, I had this like scrap of pink leather. This is pink Pueblo leather from Badalasi Carlo. And this is from Rocky Mountain Leather Company. And this is just one of their like remnant ones that they sell cheap. I think I got a whole square foot for $6. So you can imagine that, or maybe it was like half square foot, something like that, pretty cheap. And it was, I think four ounces thick. And I used bright green thread to sew it, which I thought would be fun with the pink. And then I kind of tried my hand at doing this kind of hot stamp here, put a treble clef on it. And the treble clef worked pretty well. It's where I think, there was someone on YouTube who suggested that if you had the stamps that you could heat them up with a hairdryer and then hammer them and they could still work with kind of like a hot stamp because I don't have a hot stamp because they're very expensive. And I'm gonna actually do a tutorial on how to make one of these really easily yourself if you're a beginner leather worker this month. No pattern needed unless just a trip to the Starbucks. And this is fine. I used this yesterday. This is like my actual order cup. <laughs> I get the London Fogger Latte when I go and I, I do it keto style. What do you guys get at Starbucks? Would you use a sleeve, a hand handmade sleeve when you go? And besides this, the only thing that I made was I have some new products in my Etsy store for musicians. So if you're a music person, go ahead and check that out. It's flute and piccolo swabs and a flute clarinet or oboe rest. I'll just put a link in the comments. I'm not gonna show you guys that stuff, but I did make those this month as well. Thanks for watching today. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more of my videos.